Hi everyone, welcome to Post Jazz Press, I'm Jafar Woodruff. Today we're looking at how to play fast repeated chords and I'll be sharing some tips and techniques which help you avoid fatigue when playing fast repeated chords for any length of time. The music which I'll be playing throughout the video is from a track called Dinosaur Die by Neil Cowley Trio. It's from their 2008 album Loud Louder Stop. The sheet music is available from my website postjazzpress.com. Now I can't think of any piece better suited for mastering fast repeated chords. Not only is it a rocking great tune, but Cowley plays something like 1104 chords without break and at brisk pace. We'll start with an outtake from the song so you get an idea of the technique we're aiming for and then we'll carry on from there. So today we're looking at how to play fast repeated chords. The problem with repeated chords is not just playing up to speed, but it's about avoiding fatigue. What I've found is that when I try and muscle my way through a piece of music, using the strength of my forearms to sort of work my way through it, eventually my arm will seize up with pain. So I really have to think about technique when I'm playing fast repeated chords for any length of time. To which end, I'm gonna offer you three techniques. Um, the first is the idea of playing from the wrist, the second is playing close to the keys, and the last one is bouncing off the bed of the keyboard. So first up, we're looking at playing from the wrist. Um, so when you're playing your chords and your hands bobbing up and down, what we're aiming for at the moment is that your, the motion in your hand originates from the wrist joint. We can contrast that with playing from the elbow. Uh, when you play from your elbow, it's both your hand and your arm which are moving up and down. And clearly, if you're aiming to conserve energy, if you want to play fast repeated chords for any length of time, it's more effective or more efficient to play from the wrist because the hand is much lighter than the arm. Let's just try this at the piano. Just take any chord and try playing it at uh, repeating it at a reasonable speed. I'm playing A, C sharp, A. And try and focus on that movement originating from the wrist joint. Now one thing we can do to achieve this is to take our left hand and simply support our right forearm. Make sure it's not bobbing up and down too much as we play. It's that simple. Now I'm not suggesting that when I'm playing for real, or at least with my imaginary band, that um, I only play from my wrist. Um, but the point here is that we're aiming for a sort of a secure technique and once we have that feeling in place then we can build upon it and bring our forearms into play as necessary. Next up we're looking at keeping our fingers close to the keys. The aim here is to use really small movements when we're playing repeated chords. Now I like to think of it uh, when I'm playing that my fingers are in contact with the surface of the keys when I'm doing my repeated chords. It's not necessary to lift my fingers up off the keys between chords. Just check it out. I'll play through it once with my fingers in touch with the keys at all times. My fingers never left the keys at that point. Now we can take this idea a little bit further and say, not only do I keep my fingers in contact with the keys, but it's not even necessary to let the key rise all the way up to its natural resting position between chords. You see, after you've played your chord and the key has struck the bed of the keyboard, you need to let the key rise back up in order to repeat the chord. But you don't need to let it rise up all the way so that it's level with the other keys. We're aiming for really small movements here. Now again, you can test this by using your left hand. I take my finger and place it across two keys, one key that I'm playing and the key next to it, which I'm not playing. 
and then I can feel whether the key is rising all the way up. Remember that we're aiming for um, that the key doesn't rise all the way up. Now I suggest that whatever piece you're practicing, if it's got fast repeated chords, try playing it all the way through, but aiming for a real pianissimo, playing from the wrist and using really small movements. Check it out. Now, truth is, I could play like that for days. That costs me almost no energy at all. There's no way I'm going to wear out my forearms playing like that. But you might be thinking, well, you know, so you can, so what, you can play quietly for hours on end, um, but I need to play loudly. But just bear in mind that in order to play, um, to, in order to play more loud, you don't necessarily need to play, uh, play with any bigger movements. You just need to put more energy into the keys. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to aim for a rich forte, but still playing with small movements and keeping my fingers on the surface of the keys. Last up, we're looking at this idea of bouncing our fingers off the bit of the keyboard. Now it's a little more subjective, but what we're aiming for is a sensation that our fingers are springing up off the keys. And one way we can bring this effect about is to simply imagine that the keyboard is really hot and then we want to uh, we want to avoid burning our fingers. So we keep our fingers on there. We play the notes as quickly as possible and then flick our fingers up off the keys. Now this might seem to contradict what we said earlier about playing with our fingers really close to the keys, but what we're aiming for at first is just to get this feeling of springing up off the keys, and then we want to try and tone that movement down until our fingers are more in touch with the surface of the keys. And what I think you'll find is that um, after a while, if you bring in, if you bring these three techniques um, together, if you're playing from your wrist, playing with really small movements, and bouncing off the bed of the keyboard, you should find that you get in this kind of zone where you can play uh, fast, repeated chords effortlessly, um, and, you know, for days on end. When I first started learning Dinosaur Die, I really I tried to muscle my way through it. Remember, it's got like 1,104 chords. I found that my arm would always seize up about two thirds of the way through. And at first I thought, well, I've just got to keep on practicing and build up those, those muscles, but it didn't work like that. So eventually I looked at the technique and I real, you know, I adapted the technique and now I find I can play, you know, I could play any number of times in a row without too much pain. It's not as though I won't feel anything, but it won't be the kind of crippling fatigue I felt when I just tried to muscle my way through with sort of brute strength. Okay, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making it. Check out my site, postjazzpress.com, and we'll be in touch shortly with some more videos. Take care.